And so, with that, we will wrap up this session of the People's Court as we are simply out of time for now. I'm Doug Llewellyn, thanking you for joining us and reminding you, if someone files a lawsuit against you, and yet you are convinced you've done nothing wrong, don't be intimidated by that action. The best policy is to go to court and stand up for your rights. Back in 1958, John Menard was a builder looking for a lumberyard that offered top quality materials, wide selection, and low prices. He couldn't find a lumberyard like that, so he decided to build one. Today, Menard's is the fastest growing home improvement center in the Midwest. Come inside, I'll show you why. At Menard's, we have seven big departments with a service desk in each one. We have doors and windows for every home, a rainbow of paints and stains, beautiful paneling and wallpaper, yards of plush carpeting and no wax vinyl, plus a stunning selection of lights. Menard's Hardware Department is second to none with quality tools for every purpose, yard equipment and more. Menard's has fine cabinets and fixtures for kitchen and bath, electric and kerosene heaters, wood stoves and furnaces, insulation, lumber from the finest mills in North America, everything from yard barns to pole buildings. For more than 25 years, Menards has offered the biggest, best possible selection at the lowest possible prices. We're committed to it, and now there's a Menards near you. Save big money at Menards. One taste of Colonial Family Recipes bread, <laughs> and you'll know why Grandma is throwing away her bread pans. This is New Center 13 Update. Good evening, everyone. Coming up tonight at 6 from News Center 13, in addition to our local coverage of the tragedy on board the shuttle today, our Paul Long will have the story from Ottumwa and the strike at Hormel Meatpackers. Once again today, union workers in Ottumwa defied threats from management that they would be fired and honored the picket lines set up by Austin, Minnesota workers. The workers say they want to end the work shutdown, but will stay on the lines. Join us at 6. Throttling up, three engines now at 104%. Challenger. The worst disaster in the history of spaceflight. The space shuttle Challenger blows apart, killing all seven people on board. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity. NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. It was a nightmare, a cruel, shocking end to what everyone expected to be another triumph for the space shuttle program. The space shuttle Challenger with a school teacher and six regular astronauts on board was consumed by a giant fireball less than two minutes after it was launched into bright blue Florida skies at 11.38 Eastern time this morning. The path to space was filled with debris and death. All seven people were killed. High technology, which we take so often for granted, turned on us. It was a tremendous blow, a loss so cruel, so unexpected that we're still trying to deal with it. The victims, Flight Commander Francis Dick Scobie. He'd flown in Vietnam. He was 46 years old. He leaves a wife and two children. Navy Commander Michael Smith, the pilot, also saw action in Vietnam, 40 years old. He leaves a wife and three children. Mission Specialist Ronald McNair, a physicist, was 36 years old, a wife and two children. Lieutenant Colonel Ellison Anazuka was an Air Force test pilot, 39 years old. He leaves a wife and two children. Electrical engineer, Dr. Judith Resnick, 36 years old, a veteran astronaut. She was single. Payload specialist, Gregory Jarvis, was an engineer for Hughes Aircraft, 41 years old. He leaves a wife. And of course, the seventh crew member, New Hampshire school teacher, Krista McAuliffe, 37 years old. She leaves a husband and two children. They died today in the worst accident ever to befall space explorers anywhere. NBC's Dan Molina was covering the launch from the Johnson Space Center in Houston. It was a bitter cold but sparkling clear morning at Cape Canaveral. Here at the last seconds of the countdown. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. All the communications between the shuttle and mission control indicated everything was going fine. There was a sense of relief that the much delayed flight was finally underway. Engines at 65 percent, three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104 percent. Challenger, go at throttle up. Challenger, go at throttle up. It happened just over one minute into flight. One minute, 15 seconds, velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles.
From Mission Control, silence. Then the bland, chilling report. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. Flight director confirms that. We are uh, looking at uh, checking with the recovery forces to see uh, what can be done at this point. Slow motion. A search effort couldn't begin for some 15 minutes after this. Debris, they said, just kept raining from the sky. The head of the space shuttle program had no explanations, just sorrow at the tragedy. At 11.40 a.m. this morning, space program experienced a national tragedy with the explosion of the space shuttle Challenger approximately a minute and a half after launch from here at the Kennedy Space Center. Computer-enhanced video shows the explosion in detail. What explosion appears to happen at the rear of the spacecraft, around the main engines, perhaps in one of the two solid rocket boosters? Then a blast higher up. The shuttle was instantly a blazing fireball. NASA has appointed a committee of top engineers and scientists to investigate the catastrophe. Orders have been issued to impound all records concerning the flight, down to the personal notes of all the flight controllers. Dan Molina, NBC News at the Johnson Space Center, Houston. And from ground level on Cape Canaveral, today's disaster was witnessed by thousands of people. Among them were space officials, technicians, and the families of the astronauts. Steve Delaney was on the scene to cover the launch for NBC News. The day began in optimism and high spirits after the frustration of yesterday's scrubbed countdown. As the crew suited up to enter the Challenger, one of the technicians there revived an old schoolboy tradition and brought an apple to the teacher. For the McAuliffe family and the families of the other six crew members, this was to be a triumphant day. Grace and Ed Corrigan of Framingham, Massachusetts were in the VIP bleachers along with their daughter Lisa to watch their daughter Krista become the school teacher in space. Their faces mirrored what happened a little more than a minute into the flight. The families have been secluded in the astronauts' quarters at the Space Center since just after the accident. In nearby Titusville, where the manned space program is the economy, the shock hit hard. I just started crying and, and backed up and walked away because I knew it was really bad. I wonder if anybody could be salvaged, you know, from something like that. That was really the first thing that went through my head. Vice President George Bush arrived here late in the day, heading a delegation bearing the nation's condolences to the families. You must try to understand that spirit, bravery, and commitment are what make not only the space program, but all of life worthwhile. We must never, as people in our daily lives or as a nation, stop exploring, stop hoping, stop discovering. We must press on. There was a search in the Atlantic, but the searchers found so little that late in the afternoon, NASA conceded there was no indication of survivors. But that conclusion had been foreshadowed an hour earlier, when the flag at the launch site was lowered to half-staff. Steve Delaney, NBC News at the Kennedy Space Center. NBC science correspondent Robert Bazell has been covering the space shuttle flight since this program began. He's at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena tonight. And Bob, we were talking earlier, you were a friend of Dick Scobie. He had a premonition that something like this would happen someday, didn't he? That's right, uh, Tom. Dick Scobie worked with us on, on several of the missions, and in one in particular, I remember him telling me that one of, the one of these days the space shuttle was going to blow up. He said it was a large, complex piece of machinery with a lot of explosives, enough to get it going to 17,000 miles an hour to get it into orbit. He said, just like if you take enough airplane flights and eventually an airplane is going to crash, he said someday that's going to happen to the space shuttle. And he said, I certainly hope that when that does happen, it doesn't bring the shuttle program to an end. Well, what about that? Do you think that the shuttle program obviously now has been frozen in place? for a time, you think that we'll have to re-examine the whole concept of the shuttle? Well, certainly, they're going to have to find out what happened and until they can allow another shuttle flight to go up, and that is going to bring the entire shuttle program to a halt until they do. Right now, they're beginning a process called failure analysis, where they will try in detail, looking at those pictures we've just seen, looking at other pictures, looking at all the data that came from the spacecraft, to try to learn what went wrong, to try, if possible, in some laboratory to recreate the accident. One of the 
hypotheses, and it's just a hypothesis we've learned, is that a fan, a piece of fan in the main engine came apart, a piece of metal, and that flew into the main fuel tank. That's one of the, the very strong possibilities right now, but as I said, it's only a hypothesis, and it'll take a lot of analysis to find out exactly what the problem was. Okay, Bob, and that uh, main fuel tank, of course, contains a half million gallons of highly volatile liquid oxygen and hydrogen, and so it is an explosive bomb, in effect, that is propelling the shuttle into space. Our coverage of this space shuttle disaster will continue with reports on the men and women who lost their lives today, the reaction of President Reagan, and the school children that Krista McAuliffe left behind. You won't believe how great it hauls. Your lower dentures. It's extra hold for lowers. You won't believe how great it holds your lower dentures. It's extra hold, and it's new from Fast Teeth. You won't believe how great it holds your lowers. You've been traded, Rolades, for acid and gas. Your performance is not up to tempo. For better relief from acid and gas, switch to Soft Tempo. With 75% more acid-relieving medicine than the leading tablet, switch to better relief. Switch to Soft Tempo. Teamwork is what built America. And now teamwork has come to American banking. Local savings institutions bringing you banking nationwide, yet keeping decisions close to home. For banking that's powerful and personal, team up with us, the member near you of First Nationwide Network. You're on your way. Dear Dad, just got back from my interview with Dow. Sounds like my kind of research. Finding new ways to grow more food, ways to help sick people. I'm going to go for it, Dad. And I'm going to try to make you proud. Yes, you can make a difference in what tomorrow brings. Love, David. Dow makes you do great things. Her little girl had said that she didn't want her mummy to go up in space. But Krista McAuliffe was a teacher, and her ride on the shuttle was the ultimate field trip. She wanted to bring the wonder and excitement of space back to her high school students in Concord, New Hampshire. And as NBC's Fred Briggs reports, they were waiting and watching today. Her students were counting down with her. Saw the explosion, there was confusion. Was something wrong? The principal and teachers weren't certain either. Then it got very quiet as the horror of it began to register. Would everybody please go back to class at this time? They did go back for a while, but at one o'clock, school was closed. It had to close. I felt as if uh, my whole body blew up inside when I saw that. And I can just never be as shocked as I am now. The students went home while the faculty and principal, Krista McAuliffe's colleagues, tried to collect themselves. We were enjoying the entire event. We were celebrating with her. Then it stopped. That's all. It just stopped. She had talked to her students in recent months about reaching for the stars. And now those students, members of the faculty, and her friends are reaching deep within themselves and trying to understand. Her training for the mission was shared with her students. She once told them that space exploration was in the future of every child. It was that kind of positive philosophy that led to her selection. She was one of ten teachers chosen as finalists. It's not often that a teacher is at a loss for words. I know my students wouldn't think so. When she left her husband and two children in New Hampshire for Houston, her six-year-old daughter Caroline wasn't very happy about it. Why wasn't she? Because I don't want to go in space because I just want to stay around my house. But she wanted to go for her family, her friends, her students, and the teachers who were runners-up. When that shuttle goes, they might be one body. <laughs> but there's going to be ten souls that I'm taking with me. Fred Briggs, NBC News, Concord, New Hampshire. Last July, in an interview with New York radio station WNBC, Krista McAuliffe was asked if she had any fears about her space shuttle flight. I really feel that space travel is safe now. It, it's not that earlier feeling that, oh, it's going to blow up or something's going to happen. The shuttle is a, a really good, safe program. Right at this point, I feel that I'll be okay if I go up. 
It was McAuliffe's six colleagues who formed the backbone of this mission. Four were veterans of previous shuttle flights. They represented a cross-section of our nation, born in North Carolina, Hawaii, Washington State, and Ohio, South Carolina, Michigan. NBC's Bob Jamison looks at their lives in the space program. These are the faces of the tragedy. As the Challenger astronauts walked to the shuttle this morning, dreams, not tragedy, may have been foremost in their minds. This was the first space flight for 41-year-old Gregory Jarvis, a Hughes Aircraft Company engineer. Uh, I've been charged up since uh, last March, and so this is kind of a culmination of a dream come true. 36-year-old Robert McNair was proud of the pictures he took in space. McNair said he had dreamed about being an astronaut when he was in high school. But growing up poor in South Carolina, McNair never thought this would come true. You know, where I came from, you know, that wasn't the kind of thing a black kid thought about. You know, I pursued science with that in my mind, and uh, it wasn't until recently that I saw a break to make a dream, you know, come true. McNair is survived by his wife and a son three, a daughter one. 36-year-old Judy Resnick often said she had confidence in NASA's safety record, even though she had to scramble from discovery when liftoff for her first mission was scrubbed because the engine shut down after ignition. Resnick was single, a classical pianist with a PhD in engineering who had found her life's work in space. I'd like to stay with the space program as long as they want me um, as an astronaut if I can, and if not, I'd like to stay in some other capacity because I think it's very important. 39-year-old Air Force Colonel Ellison Onizuka was the first Japanese-American in space. He leaves a wife and two children. I'd certainly like to stay in the program as, as, as long as I can, as, as long as I can contribute to it and, uh, and be a part of it. Uh. Challenger pilot Mike Smith, 40, tested planes for the Navy before he became an astronaut. This was his first space mission. Well, I, I am excited, and I, I guess I look at it like I look at flying new airplanes. Uh. Commander Francis Scobie was idolized in Washington State where he grew up. This was Scobie's second shuttle mission, and he prophetically told friends that such a tragedy as today's was possible. And we do these flights repetitively, and they get kind of a, a commonplaceness to them that's really not there because each one of them is an individual technological marvel in itself, and you lose that by watching so many of them. There are a lot of things that go on during space flight, and it's not easy to do, and, it's, and it may look easy from the outside, it's not easy from the inside. Bob Jamison, NBC News, New York. A footnote about Krista McAuliffe, she received a gift from the space division of Karoon and Black, that's a New York insurance broker. That company gave her a $1 million personal accident policy for this shuttle flight. And an official of the company said the money should be paid to the McAuliffe family within a few days. Incredible crowds have been reported at color tile stores this week. Why? Join me inside. Could you tell us why all the excitement at color tile? Oh, that's easy, darling. It's this beautiful half-price ceramic floor. Oh, no! The reason is half-price on this gorgeous mosaic tile. Huh? It's half-price on paint and wall covering that I came after. And this cuddly little blanket for buying only 80 bucks worth. So, what are you waiting for? Color tile's big half-price sale on right now. <laughs> I have a small business problem. My brother-in-law, Milton, couldn't sell tea in China. So I called the small business experts at AT&T and they showed us new ways to use long distance to open a whole new territory. What'd you sell today, Milton? 6,000 switches. Check the inventory. I have a small business problem. Call AT&T Long Distance Services. We can help. AT&T, the right choice. For gas pain and bloated feeling, Gas X has the fastest relief ingredient. Look, gas bubbles in beer. Add the leading ad acid, add Gas X. Gas X got rid of the gas. Gas X has the fastest reliever for your gas pain and bloated feeling. Ta-da! X Lax. The family friend. I almost forgot. Good thing I didn't. Families trust chocolate at X Lax. It's easy to take and work so gently overnight. A good friend to have when you need it. Gentle chocolate at X Lax. Make it your family friend. President Reagan learned about the explosion in space while preparing for his State of the Union speech, which was scheduled for tonight. NBC White House correspondent Chris Wallace reports on the rest of the President's Day and reaction as the news spread throughout Washington. The President was no different from any other American today, watching the tragic news on television. Late this afternoon, he addressed the nation about what he called a traumatic experience. 
Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Mr. Reagan talked directly to the school children who watched the launch, saying the future belongs not to the faint-hearted, but the brave. And he emphasized today's accident will not stop the space program. We'll continue our quest in space. There will be more shuttle flights and more shuttle crews, and yes, more volunteers, more civilians, more teachers in space. Nothing ends here. Vice President Bush and the acting head of NASA were sent to Cape Canaveral to talk to the families and launch an investigation. But officials said Mr. Reagan has full confidence in the space agency. The president was to make his State of the Union speech tonight and planned to go ahead even after the accident, saying, you can't stop governing the nation. But congressional leaders told the White House there was no interest in politics tonight. So Mr. Reagan canceled. Let us remember in silent prayer those who were involved in the spacecraft shuttle accident just a few minutes ago off Florida. On Capitol Hill, the House met for a brief prayer and then adjourned. But members of Congress wanted to talk. Some had ridden the shuttle themselves, like Utah Senator Garn. Well, it's very difficult for me to talk about it because these were my friends. Former astronaut John Glenn spoke of the triumphs of the space program. Sometimes, though, we aren't perfect. And then there's a tragedy that uh, brings us back to our own human frailties. Congressman in charge of shuttle funding said the program will go on, but only after a full investigation. There may be delays that could uh, go on for, for as much as a year with regard to future uh, shuttle launches. The president was going to mention the shuttle tonight in his State of the Union speech as an example of American progress. Instead, he had to deliver a eulogy to the Challenger crew calling them pioneers on the last frontier. Chris Wallace, NBC News, at the White House. This terrible event has touched the hearts of Americans all across the country, of course, and we'll have a report on how this nation reacted when we return. Now there's an antacid that's ideal for us women, new calcitrel. It not only neutralizes more acid than Maalox Plus or regular Mylanta, it gives us even more calcium than Tums. New Calcitrel is the ideal antacid for women. We asked a thousand doctors if stranded on an island, which would they want? Tylenol, extra strength Tylenol, Advil, or Bayer? More doctors chose Bayer, nearly two to one over extra strength Tylenol. Bayer, the wonder drug that works wonders. Minwax makes wood beautiful. Minwax brings out wood's rich, warm glow, so it's as beautiful to look at as it is to touch. Wood finish by Minwax penetrates deep into wood, so it's easy to get outstanding results. And when topped with our own polyurethane, Minwax protects against life's hard knocks and tough spills, letting wood's natural beauty show through. Minwax makes wood beautiful. Why change a good thing? That's what I asked when Oldsmobile redesigned the Delta 88. Oh, then I drove it. Wait till you see how it handles. There's front-wheel drive, too. But inside, plenty of room to stretch. Our Delta 88 is the family car that didn't forget the family. Some things never change. Follow the car, Dad? <laughs> Some things never change. There is a special feeling in Oldsmobile. From coast to coast, people watched replays of the Shuttle Challenger's destruction in the skies today, and they reacted with disbelief and sorrow. There could have been a tearing when the rocket went into great acceleration, its fastest point. The only thing I could think about were those kids in that auditorium and the trauma they must be going, and what a shock it must be for them to watch something like that happen to their teacher. That's what I was thinking of. Really makes you sick to your stomach is the only way that I can explain my feeling. I was sick to my stomach. I was hurt. As a, an American, I was hurt. And I, I feel, I still feel it within in my heart that we've had a great loss. I felt like every one of them was my sons and daughters. I really did. Triumph has marked and tragedy has marred America's space effort in the past. With each success, new heights were set. With each failure came a resolve to continue. And as NBC's Gary Cutley tells us now, the American spirit remains undaunted by the magnitude of even today's disaster. 
From the moment the Wright brothers proved it could be done, challenging the law of gravity has captured the imagination and exacted a human price. The Hindenburg disaster came to symbolize that. Man was not meant to fly, skeptics said, but did. Was not meant to break the sound barrier, but did. Flew higher and faster until there was only space to conquer. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. The space program, too, began with failures, to some a warning that man had met his limit. But technology triumphed. John Glenn orbited the Earth and came home a hero. For behind the coal technology, it has always been the human spirit which has driven man into space. There were losses. Three astronauts killed during a launch pad exercise in 1967. And there was the ultimate triumph. That's one small step for man. And then there was today, an epitaph for seven Americans, written large and hauntingly on a beautiful blue sky. Senator John Glenn has been there. I guess in our human existence there is triumph and there is tragedy. And uh, man tries many things. And uh, we advance as a whole human race because we because we succeed most of the time. We make advances, whether it's in space or engineering or health or medical things. Sometimes, though, we aren't perfect. And then there's a tragedy that uh, brings us back to our own human frailties. But as we contemplate our frailty, we have also been fascinated by pictures from Uranus and its moons two billion miles away. Pictures from Voyager showing new worlds to discover and explore. Can there be any doubt that one day, despite the risk, man will follow? Garrick Utley, NBC News. We'll have a special report on this Challenger tragedy tonight on NBC at 10, 9 central time. This is Beef Burgundy from Light and Elegant. This is Beef Burgundy from Lean Cuisine. Shrimp Creole from Light and Elegant. Shrimp Creole from Lean Cuisine. Sliced Turkey, Light and Elegant. Sliced Turkey, Lean Cuisine. Light and Elegant just wanted you to know what you've been missing with Lean Cuisine. Eight entrees you only get from Light and Elegant. The choice is yours. Beef Stroganoff from Lean Cuisine or Beef Stroganoff from Light and Elegant. is America's largest full-service real estate company. And these days, you don't get bigger unless you do it better. Coldwell Banker, the home sellers, a member of the Sears Financial Network. Tomorrow morning on Today, a complete report on the explosion without warning of the Space Shuttle Challenger. What does it mean for the future of the space program? Tomorrow morning on Today. Senator Stanton! Yes? You've got dirty dentures! No! I just soak them! Soaking's not enough. That's why your dentures are dirtier than they should be. Brushing with denture cream cleans denture film much better. Look, when tested against effort and denture cream denture toothpaste gets denture film much cleaner. Nearly twice as clean! So don't get caught with dirty dentures. Brush them clean with minty tasting denture cream or mouthwash fresh denture gel. It's a winner! Now, if you'll permit me some personal thoughts. As we try, all of us, to rise above our grief, we struggle for words, for thoughts that may get us through this dark day, but everything seems to be so inadequate. What plays again and again in my mind is this. Great enterprises require great risks. The men and women who died today knew that. They were the risk takers. They believed in the physical and intellectual challenge of space flight, and in that, they were an extension of all of us. We rode with them. They gave courage to even the most timid among us. Now, we share the grief of their friends and families. The shock will pass, of course, as great as it is. 
their spirit will live on. Their adventurous ways will be picked up and carried on by others. And the frontiers of space and knowledge will be expanded. And finally, to those families, as we shared your pride, we share your sorrow. I'm Tom Brokaw. Good night from all of us at NBC News. On an all-new A-Team. All these rich folks are crooks. Hannibal gets teed off at some high-class creeps. We caddies are a rough bunch. Bingo. Tonight. The lover who transformed a backward nation into modern Russia and made a peasant woman a queen. Peter the Great, Sunday. Coming up tonight from your news center. We'll have reaction to the shuttle tragedy from an Iowa teacher who knew Krista McAuliffe and was a candidate herself to be the first civilian in space. We'll have the latest update from Atumwa on that Hormel strike. And there are some new developments tonight in the strike by local cab drivers. These stories and more coming up next. Hi, this is Bob Bestseller Hope with a book report on a good business story. The silver pages from Southwestern Bell Media just might top the best read list for those 60 and older. It's full of local businesses that offer special values to these valuable customers. Also, information and magazine sections with articles and color ads. Your ad will be welcome reading for area seniors who carry these cards. So be a success story. Put your ad on the silver pages. It's good business. Hi-ho, silver. Break for the wagon, master. Go ahead, Mark. Pull up down by the gate, will you? Filling my pickup tank will save me a trip back to the house. Looks like we're saving your dad a trip somewhere, too, huh? We got you all taken care of, Mark. Tank's all full, tires all hard. That's a big 10-4 wagon, Master. You take care. Keep it on the double nickel. Five-five for sure, Mark. Catch you later. The Cynics boys are heading west. Stop wild cane from running wild and take care of 33 weeds and grasses before they start with... Eradicane Extra. You're watching WHO TV Des Moines, Iowa's news center. And now Scott Pope and Susie Robinette, Chief Meteorologist Mike Lozano, and Jeff Bime for Wit Sports. This is News Center 13 at 6. Good evening, and thanks for joining us tonight. The disaster over Cape Canaveral this morning has left all Americans numb. Here at home, the tragedy has hit at least one Iowan, perhaps harder than the rest of us. Mount Pleasant science teacher Lori Getch was one of two Iowa school teachers chosen to try out for today's tragic flight of the shuttle Challenger. When the shuttle exploded this morning, it was Concord, New Hampshire teacher Krista McAuliffe, who was aboard with six others. McAuliffe was chosen from hundreds of teachers to be the first civilian in space. She was supposed to have broadcast two lessons during the mission. This past summer, Getch became friends with McAuliffe while both tried out for today's flight. 